Hey, g'day everybody. Welcome to part three in the series of creating your own maps. Uh, and in this particular one, we're looking to add power stones and the essence of the power into the map. Now, the first thing you'll want to do just to familiarize yourself a little bit with where everything goes. Um, I've renamed my files, but you can look up some of the official maps that come with the editor. Uh, and I'm going to open up the one prior to the portals, which was the trade wind map. Uh, I believe it'll be marked either 11 by 11 or uh, server grid TW in the, the files. Uh, yeah, it is the TW one for trade winds. Uh, in the middle, basically up the top, is the, the ring that they created of all of the power stones and the essence of power. And a lot of these islands, uh, well, the first thing you need to do is edit the locks. So we unlock everything so we can actually play around with it. Uh, and these power stone islands, when you look at them in the list, they all have an underscore PVE on the end. And then when we actually have a look at the data on the island itself, the only thing that you need to do to make it a power stone island, so the island that you drag and drop will give you the cave, it'll give you the ruins, it'll give you the dragon and all that sort of stuff. But then you want to be able to assign that to an actual power stone. You need to put the island instance custom data one as power stone index, and then the custom data two, you have an array there of zero through to eight, which will give you your nine power stones. The same is true for the deep sea trench. Now there's only really one deep sea trench object, but again, you give it the power stone index and you reference basically which power stone that you want to use. The next part to this, um, there isn't really any other data, so the grid doesn't actually give you anything. It does give you different things like the, the difficulty of the ships and things that you may want to play around with, but otherwise it doesn't really give anything else. Where you want to go is actually to edit the project itself. And in this global gameplay setup, there is quests. And this is where you'll actually set up the, the right hand side of your atlas to show the power quest and being able to track it, as well as the essence of power. And the other part to it all is under discoveries. And so in here, if I reorder this, we should be able to scroll down to S. And so we have the power stones and we have the secondary stones. And you can actually see that they're labeled the stone of power as well as the essence of power, which uh, tells you what grid is your lo is your um, your discovery so that when you actually achieve it you actually get a discovery point for it some xp and this is also where you assign explorer notes so when you do the stone of power at the moment uh, you get that pop up in your face with a little bit of a blurb um, which is basically an explorer note and so you'll need to have that now you obviously could do it all through the front end but it is actually quite difficult. So we're gonna have a look at some of the tools that you might use to uh, make this happen for yourself. So the first thing that we do is we're going to want to copy out a few things so that we actually have them available for use. Uh, you can just pretty much use any editor that you like. Uh, some are better at formatting things like the JSON files than others. Um, a lot of people will commonly use Notepad++ and things like that. Uh, I don't have that at the moment on this computer, but um, you can just use Notepad if you want to. So you come into your project file. When you open it up, you're going to be looking for that quest entry. Uh, basically, it should be right near the top of the file normally and it is that global gameplay setup. And in here, it will have the quest entries for things like the Voyage of Power. And a bit further down, it'll have the Essence of Power. Uh, and we're going to want to copy that into your map. And where there's a few things in here that we actually have to edit, because there is actually an XY coordinate for the uh, Voyage of Power. And the XY coordinates for these um, quests actually put the little power stone icon onto the map. So that little black stone. Uh, and when you actually get the power stone, it'll actually change the color of the power stone to show that you actually got it. Uh, there'll also be that little, um, I think it's a little triangle of the Kraken, which actually shows where the central moor is uh, and things like that. And so we need to actually do a little manipulation of this XY stuff so that it actually lines up with the map that you're planning on using. But for now, we want to copy this out and format it the way that we want it. So once you actually have it into your notepad, you'll notice that it's very, very messy. Um, what you'll basically be looking for, and you could just use a simple search, is you're looking at the start of every single, single one is a quest ID. So from there, I can basically move through the different quests uh, up or down, depending on how you want to do it, and basically format them a little bit so that we know what we're looking at. Uh, the two main ones we're looking for, as we said before, is we're looking for the power stones and the essence of power. Uh, this also seems to have the uh, point of interest for the fountain of youth 
if you wanted to basically have that quest in there too. So for now we're going to get rid of everything that is not related just specifically to a power stone. Boom. Gone. So we just double check what it looks like on the end of the number of brackets. Yeah, it looks like there's an extra one that I need to chuck on there just to close them all out. Very good. So now I need to change all of these X, Y coordinates. So how do we go about doing that? There will be two things that I'll be using. Uh, one is the spreadsheet, which basically allows us to calculate out um, the X, Y coordinates. And this is a fairly simple spreadsheet. But then you also need to use the map editor. And in the map editor, when you hover over any location in the map, at the top right hand corner here, it shows you the X, Y coordinate that that particular spot under the cursor is. And so this spreadsheet is actually quite simple. Uh, you specify what your grid sizes were, which was 1.4 million usually, how many grids that you have, and it will give you an overall length and an overall height, which is represented by your X and your Y coordinates. And over in the left here, this one's already set up to basically calculate what is the fraction of the length and the height of the map of the place that you actually had your cursor. And so we can actually go in here, we can have a look. And these numbers swing around quite wildly. Um, 179, let's go 1.79 million. One, oh, I should probably explain what I was doing there too. Uh, so K, C, E, E, P, V, E. You can see it's actually index number two in terms of this person's uh, item representing the turquoise power stone. But it was 179 million we plug that in uh, and we can actually see that the number has changed to 0.159 of the overall length and so that would represent you know about 16 percent across and so if you thought of the whole way across being a hundred percent it is about 16 percent across the map is where that basically is going from an xy or an x being basically left right perspective and then we also need to do that with the y uh, and here we can basically go, let's say, uh, 8, 7, 6, we'll just chuck a zero in there, shall we? Yeah, 8 million, 8.760 million. 7, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, done. And we can see there that it's saying that from a up-down point of view, it is about 78%. So it's measuring it from the top down to that point. But we now have our X and our Y coordinates, and they're the numbers that we actually want to plug into our quest. So we're going to look for point of interest number two. So point of interest one, point of interest two. And so in here we want, I already did a little bit here, but uh, 0 0.159821. And then the other one is 0.78. Two, one, four, three. And we can, oh, I don't need to save that. I need to copy it into my 8x8. Um, and that will do for now, just for the demonstration purposes. So we're going to find our project. We go to our 8x8. And in here, we now need to look for the same global gameplay setup. All right, so we're going to paste it over the top of that. Maybe grab the whole lot. It's got a comma on the end. Looking good. Save that. All right, so that's now actually updated my quests for the map. It's given the location for number two. So we'll go into the game and we'll have a look and see if that actually lines up nicely. But that's only part of what we're doing. We now need to still do the discoveries and all the rest of it. Albeit that the discoveries are actually a lot simpler. So I'm going to edit the discoveries. I just took a screenshot of what was there prior. That was the wrong thing. It's this one. Bingo. Pop that on a second screen. So to explain each of the different columns, uh, the first is manual. You basically just want to tick that box. The manual name, you'll want power stone one through power stone nine. The name represents the color of each of the power stones. Uh, the colors here, I believe, are the correct colors. You can rename them if you want to, because it's just the text that you'll actually see uh, once you've made the discovery. The ID just needs to be a unique number, so I've just labeled them one through nine. The parent is the XY coordinate of the grid. 
So basically you can look there on the left, it says B7 is 1-6, so you would plug that in there if your power stone was on that spot. The size doesn't matter, you can just put zeros, rotation is zero, XP is how much you want to actually get from the discovery, and then if you want an explorer note, you'll need to put the ID of the explorer note in there. And you can reference all of these values from one of the original maps. Uh, in this case, as I said, it was the Tradewind map. Okay, so we've edited in all the discoveries. Uh, it's all set up so that basically they're looking at the various different ones there. Save that. And so we've now done our discoveries. Uh, and so at the very least, uh, we don't have the indexes. So I need to go through these now. I should make them line up with the various different ones that I've actually been doing. So we're going to basically say this one is Power Stone Index. Copy that. This one was 2. Save. GET was Power Stone Index 8, Power Stone Index 0. Done. So we've now applied a Power Stone Index to each of our islands. We have a quest entry which only currently has one of the Power Stones lined up correctly. Uh, and yeah, I think we're ready to go. So I should be able to save this as my single player. I'm going to export that much how I did in all the other ones. Uh, and we launch Atlas after copying the files across. We quickly create a new character. Okay, so we're in the game. Uh, when we have a look at our Atlas, we've got our 8x8. There are a number of things that I left in the map. Uh, something has gone wrong by the looks of it with the essence of power um, possibly some typos or I left a, an enter or something something where um, something's gone wrong with that particular entry but we're more interested in the journey of power but so to make things nicer let's just give ourselves the fog of war and so when we have a look at the atlas now uh, if you select the voyage of power you'll see that the power stones have actually turned up um, except for this one down here Power stone number three, which was the one that we were playing with. And it's right on that spot that I was actually saying I was going to place it. Now I'm going to go over there now and I'm actually going to complete that power stone. And we'll see if it will give us the right colours and everything like that. Alright, before we go any further, enemy invisible. True. Done. Let's go and find out if this is a dragon. It is a dragon. There we go. We need that. Kill, cool. we get our artifact key. All good. Now we find out where the power stone cave is. So yes, if you had the fountain of youth. Uh, obviously that would be available, but my character isn't old yet. And we have Power Stone. We made a discovery. The Turquoise Stone of Power. That's the name that I gave it. I put in the uh, Explorer Note. So we got the Explorer Note. And we can see that our discovery is now there as well. When we have a look in our inventory, we do indeed have a Turquoise Stone of Power. When we look at the Atlas, we have the Voyage selected. And we can actually see that the power stone has changed to a turquoise color. And so there you have it. We have pretty much just set up one of the power stones. But you can then basically do that across all of the other islands. Give them all their locations for their different power stones. All their different colors, etc, etc. And then you can go through the essence of power. Basically repeating the exact same process for each of these trenches. And um, giving them the essence of power uh, quest and location and stuff so at the moment you can see i click on it and i get nothing but that's because i haven't set anything up um, and yeah there's a little bit of a problem i've got a typo in there somewhere which is causing that either a comma or a bracket that's out of place but hopefully uh, this has be provided um, a bit of insight into how the current grid editor works i do know that in a few days time they were saying that there's potentially a revamp of the grid editor or at least the the next incarnation of the map is going to come out um, with the 13 by 13 Maybe it'll come with some new features, I don't know. We'll wait and see. But I'll wait till that comes out before I do any more. Um, but I'll start working on biomes and things like that probably in the next part in the series. All right, thanks for listening in. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, and comment, and all that stuff. 
and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.